Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and welcome to episode number eight, eight. of it's been eight episodes. Yes, the Courage Pays Better Than Fear podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Jeremy Ritz, expressing my gratitude and appreciation to all of you for joining us again for this new episode alongside Special Eddie, Edmund Fontana, and we are so excited to bring you this special Thanksgiving episode. But really, I think now's a really good time just to just express some thanks and some gratitude. Just gratitude, man. So, I mean, I, I can start with, I'm just super thankful for one, finding, you know, replace your mortgage. Uh, seven years ago, getting involved, um, super grateful for my, my business partners, my friends, my family, um, and just honestly, just, just being alive, man. Like you just, life is so short. Um, recently had a buddy of mine pass away last week. Um, you know, just old friend of mine. Um, and just, just never know, man, just have no idea when it's your time. So super grateful for life um, and and everybody that's part of my life. So yeah, I'm super grateful for you sometimes. Oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. That <laughs> means a lot to me. But we want to express a gratitude to all of you, the viewers out there, all of you giving us the likes, the subscribers. That truly does mean so much to us as we continue to grow. Courage pays better than fear. We have big things in store for 2023. In fact, this episode is all about something we did this past weekend where we went and basically closed ourselves in for an entire weekend in game plan set goals for the upcoming year we're going to talk all about that process the importance of not waiting to set your goals getting started having accountability to go along with that and it's gonna be a fun episode yeah man that was a it was a good weekend um i mean this started off by uh, literally uh, as we were driving to western maryland it was deep creek maryland which, which is where the cabin was at beautiful location it was about four hours away from where we live and as we're driving there we're sitting i'm sitting there saying like man how awesome would it be like if it snowed it would have started snowing it started snowing <laughs> it snowed pretty good maybe too. snowed a little bit more than what we yeah, expected what, what i really wanted it to i think we had about six or seven inches out yeah. there so it was a good snow we got there you know we didn't bust our rear ends dragging everything in um, I couldn't find a driveway because everything was, was all covered up. So I think I ended up parking the Escalade in the, in the front yard. I don't know how happy they were about that. But, um, you know, all in all, man, it was it was a good time. Very relaxing. Um, had a couple beers, didn't we? A couple. <laughs> a couple. Uh, just a couple. But, you know, it kind of gets your uh, creative mind flowing every once in a while. So, um, yeah, I'll let you start, like, kind of. Talk about the the game plan because there was definitely a, a game. I guess we got to do your furious yeah, you, you three. Jump, you jump, Man, you here, jumped ahead. Here we go with these furious three these questions. If you guys don't like these furious three questions, you need to let us know because they drive me absolutely nuts. It's something he absolutely loves, but it is what it is. All right. Um, You're just mad that I'm not asking you. Yeah, yeah. No, because he even <laughs> put me on the spot. I can't, it's hard for me to think that fast. All right, I got one for you. Uh, who is a better cook, your wife or your mother? Oh, that's easy. Uh, my mom will, will tell you that she is not, she's not a good cook. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> she, right, my right. dad, growing up, my dad did all the cooking. Uh, he, he's a, a maestro in the kitchen. My mom wouldn't take offense to that. Mm -hmm. um, my mom's good at several other things, but, um, my wife is, she is the cook. She can cook and she's the she's the cooker yeah is she, she does it. is she doing thanksgiving for you guys she's, this year we go away for thanksgiving so she'll prepare a dish but yeah we don't do like the full out here we go to uncle ken's uncle so that's ken's. where i will be tomorrow nice, looking nice. forward to it um <clears throat> you want to give your dad a shout out because that was some pretty impressive stuff yeah hey dad yeah I mean, uh shout out to you sharing your uh your accomplishment there um that was pretty impressive i shared that with edmund you know keep Keep rocking. Definitely inspired by that. Um, good stuff. Yeah. Do we want to tell them what it is? Or I think we would, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's... Not a problem. <laughs> Not a problem. I get it. Um, so, yeah. Um, Mr. Ritz, congratulations. I'm glad you watched us on here. Um, hanging out with your son is, is, is awesome. It's a trip sometimes, but it's awesome. Um, you raised, you know, raised an awesome young man. Um, oh, and, and he's a... You know, he helps me out, I help him out, and we are glad to really hear that we were able to to help you. 
Um, so hang in there, keep at it. Uh, we'll leave you know what what the accomplishment is off the table, but good for you. Proud of you. And I know Jeremy is too. Yes, absolutely. So um, all right. So that's question number one. If you could turn. Let me see. Now let me ask you another one. What when's the last time you actually fixed something? Right? So his wife gives him a hard time all the time about like fixing stuff or getting stuff done, that sort of thing. Like you, like <laughs> the boy tried to put a light bulb in the other day and I'm <laughs> Oh, I forgot about that. Thanks for bringing that up, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. Um all right, so I won't give you a hard time. <laughs> It was funny. Yeah, it's um, hilarious. So what's the, what's the last time you fixed something? I mean, I, I can fix certain things. Like, okay. I do certain things. Uh, I'm really good with technology. Um, like, you give me anything technology-related, Okay. I can handle it. That which is, is... Yeah, that's fair. That, that's definitely not that's my... That's a weakness uh, of yours. It's definitely a weakness of mine. Um, I tr- and I try with, like... I try to do stuff with my hands, but... Uh, True story. Um, installed a pull-up bar in my garage. Did we? Maybe we talked about this before. I don't think so. I was all proud of myself. Put it in. I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to start doing this. And then um, went to open the garage door. Uh, thankfully, we have two of them. <laughs> you couldn't open the garage can't door. Open the garage door because I installed the uh, pull-up bar right above it. So, oh man. So you can't open the garage door now. But I, I own we it. Built a, yeah, you did own it. But I own it. We built a studio. Believe yeah. it or not, we're actually in his garage. We're in the garage. Uh, so you can see we put all this sound styrofoam up everywhere. Um, Speaking of that, we need a name for this place. Viewers out there, if you have a cool name for this, st- you can name. We, we, we want to name the <laughs> you studio. We're going to put it in the back. There we go. <laughs> Give you naming rights. Yeah, it's interesting. Um you know, not not bad. I think we did a pretty good job for just kind of coming up with a, an idea and, and knocking it out. We, yep. we needed a place to create content for Replace Your University, and here we are. Yeah, right. Man. So, um, all right, last question. Would you rather have a 3% fixed rate mortgage or a 5% variable rate first position Home equity line of credit. That is you better uh, have that's the right a softball, answer. man. That's Come a on, softball. I would never, ever, ever. So two things I would never ever do in my life. One, I would never go back to a W two job ever, hands down. But number two, I will never have a traditional mortgage ever again in my life. This clown, uh, probably about seven years ago, uh, said, "Yo, you got to check this thing out." Um, Michael Call, Lush and the the re- HELOC replace, replace your mortgage. mortgage. Team. Yes, and at first I told him, dude. That's a scam. Get away from me with this yeah. nonsense. Uh, started watching the videos, learned about it. Uh, I believe it was in 2016 or 17. Got my first HELOC. Uh, I think that was through Chartwells, a bank out of Florida. Um, and I've never looked back since because I'm not locked into paying a specific amount of interest and basically buying the bank another house. I'm in control of that equity. I'm able to use it for investments, whether that's in the stock market, real estate. So, I mean, that was an easy question. Yeah, I know. I just had to put it out there. Because a lot of, you know, a lot of times people think that, you know, they're sold on this 3% fixed rate mortgage. But what they don't realize is that 3% fixed rate mortgage, it only dictates what your monthly payment is. Yeah. That's it. It does not dictate the total amount of interest that you actually pay on that mortgage, right? That is a, a completely separate calculation on the back end that you can actually find in your closing documents, right? Yeah. It's called TIP, total interest percentage. And a lot of the times it's anywhere from like 40 to 60% interest, yeah. okay? I don't wanna pay 40 to 60% interest on my home. You're literally gonna buy the bank a house first before you pay off your own. And the worst part about it is, as you're literally making these payments, like even if you made extra payments on a mortgage, all of your all of the extra payments you're making is trapped in the bank's treasure chest. Why would you want to do that? Especially in times like now, right? In Biden's economy. Sorry. Um, you're making it, the bank money. Uh, yeah, you're making the bank money. And they literally, you, you, you don't have access to the liquidity whatsoever, right? So in times like today, you want to have access to liquidity. So you can literally get a first position home equity line of credit, right? And first position home equity line of credit, treat it like a checking account where you deposit all of your money into it, you pay all of your bills out of it, 
every extra dollar goes towards the principal pay down, reducing your average daily balance, right? Which means you're going to pay far less interest than you would even on a fixed rate 3% mortgage, right? So we under Replace Your University, if you're ever, if you're interested about any of this, this is how both of us got started in this game. Um, if you're interested, check out replaceyouruniversity.com. There's a pathway underneath it called Replace Your Mortgage. Check it out. You will not regret it. All right. This team will take you through from start to finish, right? We even have a white glove service for you, right? We're start to finish where they walk you through this entire thing. You'll get some amazing education, amazing support from my buddy, Paul Waco, right? And you can become a client for life. So if you haven't done it yet, now's the time to check it out. Make it happen. Make it happen. Make Absolutely. it happen. And speaking of making it happen. Yeah, we did. Today is, our episode is all about setting goals how do you go about the process of setting goals and really that's what we did this past weekend we talked about being out in deep creek maryland where basically looking at research-based practices um, how to go about this process we reflected on where we were five years ago in specific areas like finances relationships uh, emotion uh, mental health and then we did the flip side where we were five years later where we, we where, where we're at we're today. today yeah and it was really it was eye-opening it for, was for very me. Yeah. for me too yeah, yeah. It, it was uh so you know we you had to go through and you had to rate it like from zero to to ten right right zero being you, you know everything like in finances if you put a zero like everything's miserable you're going bankrupt all the way to number 10 to where you're like i'm living a dream and where i was at five years ago um I probably was in around the three to fives five years ago. And then where I'm at today, I mean, everything increased by about three to four points. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I've been in this game a little bit longer than Jeremy, right? So, Jeremy, you want to talk about yours? <clears throat> yeah. So, I think, you know, it was interesting as we compared the different categories, mm -hmm. obviously shifting over from a W-2 job to where now um, I'm completely responsible for my financial well-being, which I love. I'd want it no other way. But... You know, there, there is a learning curve through this process. And so in, you know, the, the career category, finance category, I rated myself lower. But, you know, as Edmund and I were talking, he said that was similar to where he was, um, you know, when he started this journey. Yeah, five years ago. Right. So I'm about five years ahead of him. So it, it made sense that he's currently at where I was at five years ago. Right? right. And then I told him, you know, I said, when we come back to this cabin five years from now, we reevaluate. We're gonna, you're gonna see, you're gonna see the changes. So, and the cool thing is, is you're gonna get there faster. You know why? Because you got the right people in your life. You got the people that have already done it, that made yep. the mistakes, that have the mentors, have all the resources. So instead of you trying to figure it out along the way, right? You have me. You have the team. Um, that are going to get you there right. much faster without the mistakes. Right. And I feel like, too, just the education that I've had up until this point. Um, you know, I was talking to somebody from school yeah. uh, yesterday, and they were asking me, like, how are you making money? And I said, look, I, I've been studying the market since April. Um, and that's not a long time, but April till now, like, I've been getting it in. Like, when I'm saying I'm studying, reading, you know, I'm putting in that time. And you know, I've had success trading. The thing I keep telling myself is if I'm doing this now, mm -hmm. what am I going to be doing next December? You know, I'm not just going to be talking about a $4,000 day. You know, I'm going to be talking about, you know, my first $20,000 day from trading. So it's just that mindset of always looking forward and realizing that, you know, you. and I think this is something too that came through when we were doing these assessments is my patience sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. sucks. Um, but you know, and I, I realize like you got to be patient because this this isn't a fast, you know, overnight thing. You got to put in the work. Yeah. So we literally secluded ourselves, got it in, you know, assessed ourselves, and then what we did was we sat down for about five hours, right, and came up with goals in five different areas. Right. Um, and that evaluation piece where we rated ourselves five years ago mm -hmm. versus today. What that did is identified those areas where, all right, you haven't made a lot of growth here or you took a step back. Mm -hmm. Why is that? And we had those conversations. And out of that is where some of those goals came from. And those areas where, you know, we're, we're thriving or we're having a lot of success, if it was an area where one of us was struggling with them, we're able to say, well, hey, how are you 
rating yourself higher? How can I learn from that? Mm-hmm. So that that whole you know thought partner being able to talk about that, having someone to collaborate with, was so powerful. Yeah, having you know having people to collaborate with when you're talking about your goals, it, it's extremely powerful because you you get to dive much deeper into into what what you really want, right? What what do you really want to change? For example, and you guys notice about me by now, like I've, I've talked about the dad bod, getting rid of it, not that having it. a father it. figure. Yeah, that's right. It's the father figure. It's not a dad bod. Um, so what I did was not only have I been working out since August, but literally since when we got back, I took my, um, my Peloton bike from the basement that I never really use, and I drug it upstairs, literally drug it upstairs with my wife. That thing is heavy, by the way. My wife's a trooper. She helped me with this thing. And, She probably cared to herself. Don't lie. Yeah, she was pissed. (laughs) That's what she was. Uh, Marked up the walls, floors, everything. It was a disaster. I was supposed to do it with you. You ran out on me. But anyway, got it upstairs, and it is in my bedroom now, right? So my goal, like, I I basically said, I am my ticket out of this bedroom in the morning is I need to start by doing 20 minutes on that bike every day, right? Monday through Sunday. And... My ticket out of that room is hop on that bike, get moving, get out, and start your day. So now I have zero excuse. It's right there in front of me, and you just you, you got to do it, right? So I have my mind made up is that's exactly what I'm going to do in the morning. But having these discussions about fitness and finances and faith and family and friends and all that stuff, it's what led me to kind of come to that, to that conclusion. Right. Um, we had a real tight procedure, too, where... We had time frames set up. Yep. We had timers. We had music going in the background. Yeah, freaking to classical st- music. Classical music yeah, to was... stimulate the brain. <laughs> and we took basically everything that we did and it just kept refining it, refining it, refining it mm-hmm. until the goals were written. And now we have written down, we have a plan. Each of us have a plan that we both can see. We have action items weekly. for each one. Yes. Well, we're going to check in with each other to hold each other account- accountable um, to, sh- to see the progress that we're making. And then... When we're going to be back in Deep Creek again next November. We're going to see, like, all right. Did, did we stick did we, to it? Did we stick to it? What progress did we make? You know, we're still checking in a long way, but that'll be, like, that big celebration for us to, you know, the progress that we made. Yeah, because you're, you're never who you were yesterday. You're never who you were a week ago, right? You're never who you, you, you weren't that person that you were a year ago, right? So every day that you're working towards your goals, you're making progress, right? Anybody can do this. Anybody can change. And it could be in any you know, any yep. area, right, of your yep. life. Um, it doesn't always have to be about, you know, fitness or finances or anything like that. So you really need to do that deep dive and assessment, um, which is... You know, which is really what we learned going going right. to Deep Creek. And the other part of the too, and I, p- I put this quote on um, a fi- my Facebook page today with, with the Courage Pays Better Than Fear logo. Don't be afraid to have big dreams. Yeah. They should scare you. They should make you feel like, oh my God, how, how am I going to do this? That's how you grow. That's by leaving your job behind and saying, I burn all the bridges. I have to make this work. Mm-hmm. You have to set big massive goals if you just set a goal like yeah i want to make i want to make a little bit of money that's not going to inspire anybody mm-hmm. you've got to set these big targets to push yourself and then subsequently put the action behind it to make it happen yeah don't be afraid to dream that's yeah. that's the biggest thing people are afraid to dream because of fear and that's why we say courage pays better than yeah. fear right and you know what? there are clowns out there that are going to criticize you yes. if you set a big goal like oh yeah what do you? Th- yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're going to sure, do that. That's happen. There, go, there, there yeah. you go again, Jeremy. He's trying yeah. to set these these lofty goals. I, I, you know, there's people out there that hate all the time. I know I got people out there that are like, dude, yeah. what are you doing? You're yeah. a clown on Facebook. Yeah. Like, you know what? Just I, show them your bank account. Yeah, just show me your bank account, right? No, just don't watch me, right? Yeah, I, like I tell people all the time, like if I'm on Facebook and I'm reaching out to you if you want to learn about real estate. And, you know, I'm sending you Facebook messages like, hey, do you want to learn more about real estate? Love to help you, that sort of thing. And, you know, they get mad. Block me. Just block it then, right? So that way you're not dealing with it. But there are people out there that we know for a fact they're helping. Your dad was was one of them. Dia was, you know, so we have... We have people out there that we're helping. That is the whole purpose of this. Right. And let's, it, let's it, talk about that mission that we set yeah. there out there, too. Yeah. The mission of Courage Pays Better. I figure you want to talk a little bit about what it is that we're trying to do. And it's really about changing people's lives for the better. Yeah. It's really just, you know, it's really just helping individuals 
the general public, right? Get past that mindset of, you know, I can't do this. Uh, get past the mindset of, of, you know. I can't be wealthy. I can't I'm be wealthy. I'm stuck in a W-2 yeah, job. Just, I can only make X amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we want to show everybody out there that this is possible. This is not uh, This is not an impossibility. It is available to all of you. And that's what we're dedicating ourselves to with Courage Pays Better Than Fear. And in 2023, you're going to see us just take this concept to an entirely new level. And we're excited about all the things that we have to share with you. And I know 2023 is like a month and a week away. But we got some big things planned. Get started now. Yeah. Get started now. Absolutely. Right. And you want to talk about what we're going to be offering starting in January. So got to, you know, obviously I have to work some things out with the business partners, but we would love to start a coaching program that literally walks you through the the goal setting, the mindset shift that you need to have, um, the accountability partners. We could even be your accountability partners. We can assess your situation to determine whether or not replacing your employer is something you can do now or if you need to put it off for a little while and then we work up to that goal. Um, you know, there are a lot of you that are already in Replace Your Employer that are already part of Replace Your Mortgage, right? Um, you know, we, we kind of work with you individually on, on that currently as is. Um, but, you know, we, we're looking to just try to take this to the next level to, to help people. Right. We want 12 people who are in that spot where they know they are not living the life that they want. They have a passion or desire or feeling that they're destined for something more mm -hmm. as opposed to going to a job that's just killing your soul. And we've been there. Yeah. We could talk you through the process of what it's like to write that letter of resignation and hand that thing in. Uh, and then the the exuberance that you feel after that, but then also the fear like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, what he said. Um, <laughs> you know, we have we have that experience. We're living it. We want 12 people who are committed to that. It's going to be our first cohort. Um, more information has come about that, but we are going to have a sign-up link um, in, in the show notes here. You can sign up if you're interested. If you're interested. Uh, and it's going to be limited to 12 people. And then also, to the accountability webinar when we were dead that we weren't able to do because we were sick and, and almost <laughs> dying, that is going to occur the second week of December, it's uh, I believe it's a Wednesday or Thursday that we mm -hmm. have the date. That will be in the show notes as well. So there's even going to be Courage Pays Better Than Fear merch coming. So Absolutely. All, just super excited about what's coming. Yep. All this is sponsored underneath Replace Your Employer. That yes. is what we do. We are going to teach folks how to walk away from that W-2 job yes. if it's something that you want to do, right? Yep. Um, we did it. There's no better people out there to ask than, than the two right here in front of you, right? Yep. And then we literally can be your accountability partner and walk you through that process. So and if you're interested, make sure, you know, hit the like button, subscribe. You left out the most below. important part. What? It, the, the culminating event for this cohort mm. is going to be a retreat. Uh, we're going to be out back in Maryland. We're going to be hanging out. We're going to be celebrating your accomplishments over that time period and there will be some carolina reapers involved yeah so if, you, if you're ready for some hot stuff let's make it happen let's make it happen and that's going to do it for episode number eight of the courage pays better than fear podcast happy thanksgiving everyone out there again just super grateful uh for your viewership like edmund said you say the smash that's your that's your smash the subscribe button hit the like button happy yeah. thanksgiving happy thanksgiving everyone we will see you back here next week for episode nine because courage pays better than fear every time. Have a great one.